everyone, Pot ISM. Welcome to part four of our NPC slash Earthix 116th AC Cobra video build. The last part today, we're going to get this done and dusted. So, we're going to work quite a bit of work ahead of us. I'm a bit concerned about how some of it's going to go because it's gone quite well so far. And I've got a feeling it's going to bite me in the backside near the end. I think it's going to be getting that body on that chassis, but we'll see. Fingers crossed it'll be okay. I've test fitted it, and it is a little bit sketchy. But we've got a lot of work to do before we get to that stage. So let's jump straight in and get cracking with it. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. Right then, straight in with our polishing today. So we've got a few specks of dust and what have you in the finish nothing too drastic so we're going to hit it with the micro mesh we'll start off the 6000 then the 8000 then the 12 we're using this wet always use any abrasive like this wet as you know part scratches onto the finish um this 2k was done i think it's about a month ago now so it's well and truly dried absolutely rock solid so we know we can give it a real good seeing to with the micro mesh now i like using micro mesh it's fabric backed it's ever so slightly padded i know a lot of people don't rate it and say there's other products out there but at the end of the day whatever works for you works for you and this does the job fantastic for me so we're working from the 6000 8000 12 and then we'll have a look and we're focusing more um on all the dust spots first to remove the high points get it down to a flat level surface then we'll sand the entire surface itself uh, and then come in with our compound and polish and polish it all back up to a nice high shine. So it's very laborious. It's very boring. And you need to be really careful near any edges, lips, ridges, anything like that where the paint is going to be thinner. Any edge, any lip, um, it's always going to be thinner paint there because of the way um, paint sits on edges. So we're just working our way around the model slowly and carefully. Now on this body, there is nothing supporting this. There's no roof. And the only thing supporting the back end to the front is that thin plastic there, just under where the door sits. So really pay attention to this. Don't be putting loads of pressure on it. Hold it on the rear and then front section when we're working on those parts. And just really take your time. I'm not implying a lot of pressure here. I'm really not. I'm just letting the sand, uh, the micro mesh glide over the surface. It's nicely wet. The micro mesh is moist. So it does slide over nicely. And uh, I'm just paying attention. N number one, making sure we're getting all the areas covered and that we're not going too harsh in any more than the others. So like I say, work our way around. Just be nice and careful. And we'll get rid of all those dust spots. Now I did this while we were live. I think it was last Sunday. Um, was it Wednesday? It might have been Wednesday, actually. So... It's a good time for me because I'm chatting away, I'm in the hangout with the guys, chatting to the viewers, answering questions, and it's a good time to do monotonous work like this. Uh, if you don't have the beauty of a live show today, we can join our offer hangouts, or put some music on, watch a TV program, anything to distract yourself while you're doing it. Now once we're done with the micro mesh, and I've gone as far as I want to go, I'm coming in out of our ultimate polish system, starting off with our compound, which is basically a more abrasive polish and we're going to go around and polish it all up to a nice high shine now with the sandpaper any sandpaper finishing paper whatever go in forward and back um or side to side straight movements don't go round and round or circles or what have you and it's the same with compound as well go in right angles to each other so across side to side up and down and that way you'll minimize uh, the chances of scratching. And it'll also help you remove scratches a little bit easier. So again, bit of a monotonous job. But time well spent because this is where that nice, deep, lustrous shine will come through. We've already got rid of all the floors with the micro mesh. So we need to get that shine back now. Because the micro mesh has dulled that surface a bit. So the harsher compound will get rid of all those micro surface scratches left behind by the micro mesh. 
And once we've got this off and buff that to a nice high shine, we come in with the polish, which is less aggressive, and get this to be a real nice, smooth, shiny, and hopefully good looking finish. So this probably took me all in about three hours to do. It's quite a bit of work, but it's a very, very important step to do. But be aware you don't go too far or you're not too aggressive and burn through because then all your hard work's done and you've got to start again. Now I'm using our microfiber cloths, which I also call carbon fiber cloths, messing about. I think a few of you have picked up on that. A few seem to think I've gone absolutely crazy. But yes, they are microfiber. I call them carbon fiber messing about. Uh, and again, we sell these at UMP as part of our polish system. And these are ideal for doing this. Um, I have several. Um, I use different colors for different parts. So brown is for the compound. Uh, and I use two for that. So I know which one's which. When they're done, they go in the wash machine. They're washed and they're ready for use again next time. So I have a good stack of them, probably about 15 to 20 of them. Because I will change them regularly to make sure there's no contamination, glue, or anything like that along the way. As you can see, if you do it and you're not quite happy, put a bit more compound on and go at it again. Simple as that. Once you're happy with that, we can come in with our polish. This is a lot thinner than the compound. Actually, this can't be the polish because it's still a brown cloth. You see the beauty of the cloths, I can tell what I'm using. So like I say, we're going around, <laughs> we're just giving a final polish up, having a look. If there's an area you think can be improved, go over it again. It might be with the micro mesh, might need another go over or give another pass with the compound. But yeah, only you can decide this and only you can decide how far you want to push it because you can always go one step further. You can't go a step back once you've gone too far. So sometimes you're just going to take one on the chin and think, right, there's a slight flaw there. I'm going to accept that rather than ruin the model. And again, working a compound round, just going all round the model. Like I say, very boring and monotonous. And I've shown a little bit more of this process today than I normally do. Uh, I normally whiz through this section, but I think it's nice to see sometimes how much time can go into this. And like I say, this is about three hours from where we're at now to when we finish this polish in a minute. It's about three hours of work to do this. It's quite a lot of time. But this is probably the most prominent part of the model. And what you will see near enough more than anything is the bodywork. So it's time well spent. Just take your time and be careful. Now, like I say, we do the full ultimate polish system at UMP. Tried, tested by myself. I've been using this for absolutely ages, way before we started to sell it. I was testing this out as were others. And for me, it's working absolutely perfect. Absolutely love it. Um, it's abrasive enough to do the job without being too much and too aggressive. And it goes on and comes off really, really easily. There's other solutions out there. If you've got some stuff at home already, you don't need to rush out and change everything. But I would highly recommend it if you don't already have it in your arsenal. Or if you're looking to um, change or upgrade, uh, I definitely give our polish systems a go. And I think my work speaks for itself. And my work's by nowhere near uh, perfect. But at the end of the day, I pitch this as a thousand words. And have a look at the pictures at the end and see what you think. There we go, red clots now, so we're on to polish. So, as we've been doing the body, we've also been doing the hood, bonnet, boot, trunk, and the doors. I think they're called the same in the States. Um, so yeah, we're just going around, and again, just carefully polishing it all up. So these have all been done with the compound as well, and now using the slightly less abrasive polish, again, re removes any microscopic scratches left behind by the compound. And it's just a case of going around and polishing everything up. Smaller parts are a little bit more difficult because you've got to try and hold them. And again, just be aware of all the edges and corners and what have you. And just really take your time. Like I say, you can go one step further if you stop. Once you go too far, you can't go back. And again, the last door. Quick go over. Like I say, these have all been done with the micro mesh with the compound and with the polish. I've done everything. Just don't show it all on camera. Um, but it's quite a... Uh, yes, I think I started this at 10 a.m. It looks to be about 1.30 there on my watch. Uh, so, yeah, quite a lot of time. A lot of time. Now, underneath the bonnet or hood, if you're strange, 
Um, we're going to hand paint some Vallejo model colour black. So, oh, we've got a bit of paint there. Luckily, water-based on 2K. It literally wipes straight off. This is what I love. See? You have to think ahead. So, yeah, water-based paint, uh, model colour black, thinned with a drop of water. We've got Tamiya brush here, flat brush. I'm just going to carefully brush paint it. Now, I have the carpeting I used on the underneath of the Skyline bonnet, if you remember that one. Sadly, this bonnet sits very, very close to the top of the engine. And I think that extra few mil of the... Um, felt material would have interfered so i decided to paint it instead it looked just as good and uh yeah a little bit quicker a little bit easier to do flare model colors are very good brush paint pretty forgiving to use um and yeah just thin it with a splash of water one or two light coats like i say if you got anything else if you've got lacquer down or enamel or 2k it will literally wipe right off without any damage at all so we've got the bonnet to do, the boot, and we're going to do the two doors as well. Get them all painted up. We've done all the hinges that you can see on the bench and the brackets. They were all done off camera and sprayed in the ruby red we did the body. So we're all ready to go here. So we're going to get all this painted up, leave it to dry for an hour or so, and then we can get all the body panels on and in place. Getting nerve-wracking now because this kit's gone better than I thought it would. As I've got to the end and I've started to test fit bits, it's like, hmm, okay, that's going to be very tight. Or that's not going to fit. Or this isn't going to sit straight. More so the body on the chassis. I very quickly tried it and it didn't look great. It needs going to need a little bit of manipulation, I think, to get it to sit right. But we'll deal with that when we get to it. For now, let's deal with all these little snag jobs we need to get done. Tail lights, so some Tamiya lacquer clear orange. Uh, I'm going to go with yellow indicators on the front, and I'm going to leave both lights on the rear red. Because you only get one set of clears, I would have liked two, one for the back, one for the front. But hey, we didn't get those, so I chose to put these on the front. So we use a micro brush, just for ease. Let's you pick it up, dab it on, put it on quite thick, then leave that to dry, and that's a job done. And then we're back with our hood bonnet. Two different hinges here. Make sure you get the correct one. They only fit the right way. This will get locating holes. That's the wrong one. So this will be the right one. There you go. We've got a little bit of excess CA glue there. So make sure there's none on your fingers. And we'll wipe off the excess. And then same on the back. A couple of spots of CA glue. It'll line up the holes. Get it all to sit nicely. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Make sure you get no glue on your fingers. And you're good to go. Door cards next. Again, a couple of drops of glue. Door card locates in place to locate points. And these house the hinges for the door as well. It's a little bit agricultural. It seems to work pretty well. Now, on the rear boot lid, I decided to attach uh, the hinge part first. Uh, and then I had to spread the parts out on the boot lid to get them to fit and on the front i thought i'll do it a slightly different way so again a couple of dabs of seal glue make sure you don't get it on your fingers pop one side of the hinge bracket in first and then gently spread it out a little bit sketchy to do but it went on there we go in place opens and shuts really well to be fair quite a good closure on the front i put the bonnet in we've got a little bit of tape at the top to hold it couple of dabs of glue and we're going to pop the bracket over the top much easier way of doing it a little bit safer and a lot less stress on the plastic get it all positioned put the hinge in glue it hold it let the CA glue do its job grab a hold of it and leave it be same on the doors again we get the doors in place we get the bracket pop it over the top couple of dabs of CA glue and job done and then we can repeat that for the other side, and that is our doors all complete. So just be careful at this stage, using CA glue is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I hate using it on bodies, but it's a necessary evil. Just make sure you don't get it on your finger, because I did get a splotty CA glue on this. Had to go back and completely resand it all, and um, repolish it all to remove it. 
And I didn't record it because I'm going to be honest, I was that annoyed with myself. I just switched the camera off and got at it. Now, the boot uh, liner, I suppose it is, which we carpeted with flock, all lays in place. Just pop it on. Quick dab of CA glue, quick hit, hit of activator on both sides. Wipe off any excess. Job done. Repeat that for the other side, and that's glued in place. Now, this is where things are going to start to get a little bit sketchy now because we're getting it all together and things are going to start to interfere with each other. So, yes, get a little bit worried here now, but we're going to plow through and just fingers crossed, hope it all fits together. Head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and Lee's business because without alternate modeling products, there would not be any international scale modeler and all the videos we put out there and the Facebook page and the forum we run. We stock loads and loads of modeling products, including all our own products of our Apex Airbrush, our pigments, primers, sanders, thinner and cleaner tools, our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. Now, here we go. So we've got a couple of dabs of CA glue and those locator points underneath. Everything is on. We've got the inner wheel arches in there as well. We see I glued those in place. And this should literally click in place. You'll feel it. And once it is, hold it and let it go. The back's in. The back's in a good height. There's a little locator point on the front just above the rad. So I put a dab of CA glue on there. And that then hits the bracket we put in for the bonnet lid. And then we're going to push that down. Grab some activator. And just put it on the edges underneath. And just touch, let it flow in, add a little bit more, touch, let it flow in. And then leave that for another few seconds. And if it doesn't grab it, try again. Took a couple of goes, but we got it in place. And that pretty much got our rye hide sorted. Dashboard just pushes in from the top. This kind of just clips in place. So a little bit of glue strategically placed. And we can get it all lined up. Fiddly, but at least located there quite positively. And once we're in, we can then go our windscreen in. Now, this is one point I wasn't looking forward to. And I did decide to do all the trim in black. Now, I did paint it in chrome, but I rushed it. This is a confession here. I rushed the whole stage. I normally paint the semi gloss, sorry, the gloss black, leave it a day. Spray the chrome, leave it a day. Spray the aqua gloss, leave it a day. I did it all in about 18 hours. It was too soft. I wrecked it. And then looking out, looking at pictures online, I thought, you know what? I quite like the black look. Let's go with the black. So that's what I've done. This has just been primed. It missed the surface of black. And that is it. Nothing else at all. So a couple of dabs of CA glue. Just let it sit. And hold it, and that's it. Once it holds itself, we're all good. There you go. Nice and simple. No mess. Kind of worried about doing this bit. But we're all good. Hold itself in pretty well. So with lots of little fiddly parts to attach the body, now's the time to add some protection to it. Now, there's two lots of wax with our uh, polish system. There's an actual physical rub on wax i like the spray wax myself it's a spray um well wax protection really but it gives a really nice deep shine so we're going to pop this on now then we can put all the other parts on the outside and it's a case of just running it all around the model it doesn't need rubbing in it's not abrasive it's just putting a coating on the surface get it all over the paintwork let it dry to a haze get a clean cloth come on in and buff it off and we'll be left with a nice deep shiny paint so this is the way to do it. This is how I do it. Uh, whichever way you can go, it'll work perfectly. As you see, bonnet stays up, which is really good. Quite useful. And there's our engine in there. And we've got a few 
components to put back on. So we've got a front bumper, rear bumper, uh, fuel cap, the handle for the boot, handle for the bonnet, uh, headlights. So we're going to use a combination of UV glue and PVA glue just to glue all these parts in place. For the front rear lights, we need to open the holes up a touch, which we have with a, I think it's a 1.5 mil drill bit. And we just clean up the light lenses that we painted orange last, well, the night before. Clean them up with a sponge, clean up with a polish, then we can pop them in place. Just some careful clean up with a po uh, sponge, then with our polisher, and then we can glue them in place. Now, with, the, yeah, with these being clear parts, we can use the UV glue to uh, glue them in place because the UV will travel through the clear part and it will glue it in place. You can use sea glue if you wish, but if anything falls out or moves, you end up with a smear on the body, and I've ruined many a good paint job with uh, CA glue. The beauty of the UV is it does wipe off. Um, not as easy as PVA, but it will wipe off if required. So keep the nib clean, which I've just done there. Apply a little bit in the hole. Grab our decal tweezers, which are ideal for grabbing parts like this. We'll pop it in place, like so hold it grab the uv light hit it yeah it says five second fix i think it takes a little bit longer i think five to ten is probably more realistic and then we can go to the other side uh, and repeat and then the headlights we're going to use glue and glaze from crystal uh, sorry from deluxe materials this has gone tacky on the side i'm just going to line it up they don't fit exactly in the center so you've got to line it up and let the tackiness of the pva grab it once you've got it, leave it be. It takes a little bit of time to grab. There you go. Same on the other side. And the beauty of PVA is you can wipe off the excess really easy with a moist cotton bud. And there we go. Now, what do we think of the black trim? Would it look better chrome? I'm kind of on the fence here. I like the chrome. And the car does suit the chrome look. But the black is different. And I always add, like to add something different to all of my builds. Um, so I'm kind of liking it, kind of digging the look. So we're going to go with it and see. At the end of the day, it's my model, it's my choice. I may pick another one of these up at a later date build it, because I quite enjoy building this, to be honest. And we can do it in chrome, do it in the, you know, the standard blue that everybody does. Uh, but this is my model. I've done it in a Porsche colour with silver stripes. Bright red carpet interior, cream leather, black trim, a little bit different, which, uh, well, pretty much describes me, really. I'm a little bit different. There we go. UV pen on the rear lights, drill them out, clean them up, pop them in place, hit them with the UV light, and uh, job done. Nice, quick, easy, pretty fuss-free. And more importantly, it doesn't leave a terrible mess or... The risk of fogging, fogging. I've put small parts like these on the past with CA glue. Come back an hour later and it's fogged around the edge. So not good. Rear bumper in place. I'm just putting a little bit of the glue in. Into the recess. We'll pop the bumper in. Hit it with the UV light. And again, works really well. We were chatting about this yesterday, me and the guys. And we were saying maybe a more powerful UV light might be beneficial here. It will probably cure the resin a little bit faster. But a little bit of patience, just hold it in, keep coming back, hitting each side. It does a pretty good job of holding it in. And it's not permanent, or a CA glue would kind of be permanent. If you tried to get the parts off, you'd snap them. You can get these back off, should you wish. Boot lid handle being held on by a nice tacky bit of uh, Deluxe Materials glue and glaze that's been tacked up on the side for about 10, 15 minutes. Get it lined up, get it straight. Luckily, we've got a nice stripe in the center to line up to. There was a number plate light for the back of this, but I'm not putting the number plate on. So I decided to leave that off. And then we've got our fuel for the cap as well. Which again, a little bit of deluxe materials, PVA space glue. And there we are. Now, as you can see, I've got this on on my paint stands now, so I can spin it easily. Now, the windscreen of the kit is shocking. It's awful. So before I painted the screen surround the other day, I made this template. I bought some acetate off Amazon. This is actually called, I think it's a cake topper. 
So this is for going around the side of cakes to ice them so you don't get icing down the side, I believe. Now, acetate sheets aren't cheap. I got a... Ooh, I can't remember. I think it was a four meter roll of this by 10 centimeters for six pounds delivered off Amazon. It's in a roll. It stays nice and safe in the roll. It doesn't get damaged. And it's perfect for this. And I bought it specifically for doing this. So I made the template. I know this fits the screen. So we're going to cut around this with a nice pair of the uh, Tamiya decal scissors and get a nice clean piece of acetate. And then we can glue this in place with the UV pen again and hopefully have a much more realistic and nicer looking screen than the horrible, thick, blurry, crazed, cr scratched plaster that comes with the kit because it really is nasty. So, yeah. So... With this being perfect, I know I can slot it right down the front of the screen and it won't need any glue at the bottom because the way the screen sits, it will hold it in. So we get it all lined up at the side, all perfect. And we're gonna push the center in to line it up. And we'll add a dab of UV glue right in the middle and then on each side. And anyway, we go, you need the smallest amount of this. Don't let it fall down onto the glass. If you get a little bit extra, grab a cotton bud and wipe it off. Keep that away from the model and then push it on in place. Hold it. Grab our UV light. And shine it on there for a good 10 seconds. And there we go. That's that one on. We'll do each side. And if any other areas need doing, we can do those as well. Less is more, you do not need a lot of this. There is no force required on this. It's literally just to hold it in place gently. If you get any excess before you hit it with the pen, the light, sorry, wipe it off. And there we go. And then we can move it round to the side. Make sure you don't get any of that on the body. So this side, because it's the last point, it's going to need a little bit of manipulation. So we're going to put some right in the top corner. We'll put some right down the bottom corner. And then there's a little bit just on top that needs a dab more. So this made a huge difference compared to the, the screen that came with the kit. So if you're building this kit, and there's a few you're building it right now. I know Gary is, Ride the Wind. And I've seen a few people on Facebook saying that they are building it or they're going to build it. Get some of this stuff. It's really easy to get a hold of. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description of the video for it. And use it instead of the kit plastic. Because the kit plastic is nasty. Very nasty. Mine was all scratched and damaged. Um, probably could have been polished up. But it was quite thick as well. Whereas I think this looks a lot more realistic. And a lot more to scale. Don't apply a lot of pressure on the back of that screen. We don't want to pop it off where it's glued to the body. And again, if you get any excess UV on, wet a cotton bud, don't put it in your mouth, like I definitely didn't. And just hold it in place, hit it with the UV pen. And there we go. All in. Quite fuss free. I was kind of dreaded doing this part, to be honest, but actually it went in pretty well. Not too bad. It looks much better than the kit plastic. The uh, roll hoop now on the back, and again, PVA glue, a couple of little dabs in there. Put it in, locating holes. Again, we widen the holes a touch with our pin vise, just to make them a bit more, well, a bit wider so it actually fits in properly. PVA glue, let that sit and dry, make sure it's all lined up where you want it, and then just leave it well alone. And then the exhaust. Now, I did the exhaust in LP19 gunmetal. I was thinking of doing it in, like, the ceramic white colour. But I thought, you know what? I saw a couple of people's real cars with a gunmetal exhaust on it. And really like the look of it. So, we're going to hold this in. Surprise, surprise, again with our UV glue. There's a little locating mount on the front. And they line up to the manifolds inside, which I did have the wrong way. Whoever messaged me that, you were correct, sir. Thank you very much. They are lined up correctly now. I 
just let the UV pen do its job and then we can flip it round, do the other side and we're good to go. Couple of dabs at the front, couple of dabs at the back and jobs are good. UV pen has become one of my favorite tools. It works really, really well. Like I said, it's not a permanent fixture. You can get it back off should you need to and it does work really, really well. Side window, uh, I don't know what you call these, wind deflectors, I suppose they are. I've been painted up. These are the kit plastic as they have brackets on them. I've painted them in silver. Um, I don't know why I did it. I just thought a little bit of a different contrast against the black. Uh, I contemplated black and I thought, no, let's do it like this. And there we go. That's it. She is all done. For an old kit, it's come out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. The doors are a bit iffy on the shutting. They do shut. They don't line up absolutely perfect. But the boots and the bonnet and everything else lines up pretty well. Pretty happy with this one. For an old kit, it's not come out too bad at all. We've got a beautiful red carpet of the boot and the interior with the cream leather. And our 427 engines in there as well. Not the most detailed, but it's there. We wired it up. It looks okay. But overall, for a 40-year-old kit, I'm more than happy how this has come out. It looks pretty good. Interior looks good. Exterior looks good. The black is definitely growing on me more and more. Um, if I was to do another one, I probably would do it blue, and I probably would do it in chrome. But we'll see what comes down the line. But there we go. That's a finished. I've got some pictures for us to look at as well. Right then, so we got the Cobra in the photo booth. And there we go. So this was primed in Ultimate Modeling Grey Primer, base coloured in Gravity Porsche Ruby Red. Uh, we used Mr. Hobby Silver Plate Next for the stripes and the wheels. Beautiful colour, beautiful paint. And then we clear coated it in Gravity Spain 2K Clear. Black trim was all done with Mr. Surfacer Black. The interior was a focus detail set, interior set from Gravity as well. It's the white leather uh, interior colour. Molotow Chrome for the interior. We used Scale Production Red Flock. Um, and we painted the exhaust in LP19. Engine was done in various LP and TS colours, as was the rest of the bodywork and other panels that we've done. Numerous paints, too many to name. But overall, this has turned out really well. Now, some of the panels don't fit great. You can see on that door there, it doesn't quite close properly. But for a 40 year old kit, it's actually gone together surprisingly well. I'm more than happy with the result. It's a beautiful looking car. I'm so happy I picked this colour. Would I buy one again? Yes. If I do, like I said, I'll do it in the Le Mans Blue with uh, chrome trim. We'll do that stereotypical Cobra look that most people tend to do. But me being me, I like to be a little bit different. And that's what we've gone for here. And I think it's turned out pretty well. Um, like I say, 40 years old NPC AMT Rebox, Airfix Rebox. And I think it's come out well. It's lacking in areas. It's an older kit. I think it makes up for it in other areas. But at the end of the day, I've made the best of it that I can. And like I say, I'm more than happy with it. And uh, yeah, now we can move on to our next build. There we are then. That is my seventh build of the year complete. And seventh video build because I made that stupid promise. I was going to video build everything I built this year, modeling wise, anyway. So, another one off the bench. Uh, I quite enjoyed that. It did seem to drag a bit near the end. Um, and I am glad to see the back of it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, not for any particular reason, other than I really want to start a new project. Now, what's that project going to be? Well, you're going to have to join me on my next bench update to see. And I have two I want to do. One I really want to do, and one I'm thinking, why the hell did I buy this? And if you know me and what's happening, you'll know what it is. <sighs> so yes, you have to join my bench update, which I'm hoping to get out in the next couple of days. And we'll have a little chat and a little look what we've got. So we've still got the BMW to carry on with, the Platts Beamer. We've done all the bodywork on that. Part one of the build went up. You can go back on the channel and watch that one. So that continue, but we do need a new large-scale project to crack on with. So I'm going to figure out what that's going to be and we'll come back and build it. But this kit, great. Great colour. Not a bad kit at all. 
pretty happy with all the colour choices I made uh, overall. I think it's come out quite well. And as I said, all along for a 40 year old kit, it's not that bad. I've built a lot worse in kits that are a couple of years old. So if you're thinking about getting it and you like the AC Cobra, you can get a 24 scale Revel, 24 scale uh, Fujimi. I get this, personally. I get this. I don't think it's any more or less work. But I think you're going to be, at the end of the day, you're going to have a more impressive model to deal with. Uh, and I don't think it's all that much work, and either of those two kits would be, essentially. But the choice is yours. If you can get one, I grab it. If I see another one, I think I'm going to grab it, like I say. And we'll build it again later down the line, change a few things up, maybe put a different engine in it. Don't know. Um, but yeah, if you see it and you want to build a Cobra, grab it because it was a good fun build and it's come out pretty well at the end of the day. There we go. So, on to the next build. Like I say, join me on a bench update in a couple of days. Might even be tomorrow. Depends how I get on with things. Uh, although we have got the live show in the morning, so probably Monday, actually. Um, and we'll have a discuss about potential builds and what I feel like doing. I don't know why I do this myself, but I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support for the build. Everyone that's left comments. I know I don't reply to you, and I say this every time, but I really do appreciate all the feedback along the way. It's massively appreciated. It really does spur me on with the build. It's just replying takes so long. It takes away time doing the videos and building. Same with putting the thumbnails in. While all the thumbnails of the products are fantastic, it really does take so much extra time to do that I could be doing more videos with. So I'd rather produce more videos for you and enjoy the builds more than sitting here editing for hours. I've been editing since 10 a.m. this morning from 10 till 3 and then uh, half 4 till nearly 6 p.m. And that was editing a few pictures and this video. So it's a long, long time, a lot of work to do. And that is a lot of modern time taken up. So that's the reason why I made that decision on the thumbnails. But thanks for all the support. Please continue leaving your comments, thumbs up, share the videos around. I need to get these videos out more because I'm not getting massive amount of views that I should, really, in all honesty. Um, but yeah, please share them around. And like, subscribe, comment, click the bell notification on the videos. And of course, as always, go check out umpretail.com. You get a lot of products I use in the video. International Scale Model Facebook page and forum. The Offer Hangout group and a lot of the bench group for all the uh, off-air hangouts and the live show news and my Paul SM modeling page as well where all my personal modeling work is shared and my latest updates so if you go over there you'll get a sneak peek of things before the video so well worth looking all the links for that in the description of this video so if you pop down there you'll find them and uh, I will see you all in a couple of days for another bench update where we'll recap the Challenger the Cobra talk about the next build look at the fish Talk about the compressor. Yeah, whatever you want to talk about. So, thanks for watching today. I will catch you all next time. That will go off now. There you go. Um, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Have a, well, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And don't forget, we're live in the morning on Sunday as well. Um, and I will catch you all next time. So, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.